Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Full Potential Show. I'm James Rick, and this is your number one non-boring source for personal development. Today on the line and early is uh, Early Jackson. Early is a life coach, a social activist, and uh, an author and a speaker. Early, thank you so much for being on the Full Potential Show today. Well, Early, let's talk a bit about your background. First of all, I understand that you started out a little bit, you know, rough in life. You overcame a drug addiction. And, and I'd like to understand more about that journey that you took to get from that kind of situation to where you are today. Let's go back. How many years ago was that? And, and how did you get there? Wow. Well, um, James, I am 39. Um, I started dabbling and kind of experimenting with drugs when I was about 14, 15. Grew up in a really bad neighborhood. Mm -hmm. Um, kind of a normal story for, you know, someone on that side of the tracks or whatever. Mm -hmm. And I'm um, about 14, 15. I really started experimenting with some with different kinds of drugs, cocaine, marijuana, things like that. Drinking. So and you were a young chemist. Yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. And uh, fortunately, the environment that I was in was very conducive to that type of lifestyle. Mm. So I got involved in it, ended up joining the military at 19. Mm. And at about 23, I realized that there had to be a change in my life because I was going downhill quick. What, what, and, made um, you, that's what, what made you, like, what was the moment? Because sometimes, you know, when we make these realizations, there's a moment. What was the moment that made you go, I am going downhill quick? Kind of describe what it was like at that moment. You said, I got to make a shift. Oh, absolutely. I can give you the date. It was December the 17th, 1993. Mm -hmm. And um, I had hit rock bottom. I had about 10 bucks in my pocket. And I was on my way to Philadelphia from Virginia Beach to um, kind of stay with my sister because I had gotten put on putting out of my apartment. Mm. And just riding that bus up here to Philadelphia, I realized, man, something's got to change. This is not I don't want to be here in 20 years. You know what I'm right. saying? I totally know. Uh huh. So so not that I was there, but I can imagine. So so that right, was right. the moment. And then what did you start doing when you made that shift in your mind? This is rock bottom. I got to start making changes. What did you start doing? Well, one of the one of the first things that happened was my philosophy um, that I live. I kind of lived the philosophy of life that you only live once, spend it all now. You know, tomorrow's not promised. Mm. And coming up to Philadelphia and spending some time with my older sister and her husband, I, I kind of got an introduction to a different philosophy or paradigm shift that re that I had to realize that you know what you have to leave a legacy every day of your life because. What, what you do today is obvious is, is ultimately going to catch up with you 10, 20 years from down the line. And I realized that life has this cyclical process of seed time and harvest. Uh, if you want corn next year, you have to plant corn this year. Great, and just those metaphor. simple principles, you know, just really got in me and, and started, you know, propelling me to a different direction. So you went from this short term focus of eating your seeds, <laughs> so to speak, yeah, exactly. <laughs> to, to realizing that you need to plant them for a, a better long term harvest. So that short term thinking went to a long term thinking. Absolutely. At 23, James, I actually had a repossession on my credit. Mm -hmm. uh, my credit was horrible. Um, it, you know, my, my health was poor because I was partying. And I realized that I'm not going to last too much longer like this. I'm going to be a poor father. I'm going to be a poor husband to somebody. I need to make some changes now. Okay. And and so now you're you're in this new environment. You're you're with your your older sister and her husband. And what are you starting to do differently now with your life? Now that you've made the shift and you're ready to commit to a new life. You know what? One of the big things is I started taking ownership. Mm. And I got rid of a lot of bitterness and anger. I went through some counseling mm. uh, because I had some father issues, as you know, unfortunately, many African-American men do. Mm. Um, I, I had some father issues. I had um, lost my mother at an early age, you know, or, you know, a few years earlier. Mm. So I got involved and I got around people that were positive. Mm. I realized that, you know, you are the sum total of your network. Mm. And the people that I was hanging out with, they had already shown me what the end was going to be. So I, I ended up in a different group of people mm -hmm. around a different circle of people. And my outlook and my perspectives became much brighter. Where did you find these people? I mean, once you, you made that decision, these people are not taking me down a track that I want to go on. Where did you start looking to find more positive people? You know what? I, I was um, involved with church at the time, mm -hmm. so I met quite a few people at church, but also in corporate America, I, you know, I got a whole different job here in Philadelphia and just being around people and obtaining a mentor, which I had I, I didn't even understand the concept of a mentor at the time. But when I when I actually got a mentor and uh, he was able to share some of the mistakes 
mistakes that he made and show me what those end results were going to be. It it really, it literally 180 degrees, man, turned did, me all did, around. Did you approach him and say, look, I, I need some help? Or did he approach you? How did that mentor relationship start? You know what? I ended up approaching him mm. because I saw say? how successful. You, what, what, how did you approach? Like, this will help people that maybe are looking for that mentor. What did you say? How did you approach him? That, that's very excellent, um, James. Uh, and I actually teach a course on obtaining mentors. Mm. Uh, one of the things that I learned is that when you're when you're about to seek a mentor, you need to do some research on them. Mm. Uh, that's one thing. Number two, I realized that his time was much was extremely valuable, and I didn't want to waste it. Mm. And I also needed to define a mentor versus a friend. I didn't need a buddy to hang out with. I needed a mentor to meet with periodically to keep me accountable to my dreams and my goals. Mm. And when I approached them, I kind of approached them with that laundry list of goals that I wanted to obtain in the next five to 10 years. And I asked them, how did you do it? And I even offered, and this is real important, I offered to take him out to lunch. I mean, it was Boston Market, mm. but you know, it was all I could afford at the time. But I took him to lunch because I feel like if I'm gonna ask him to invest in me, mm. I should be willing to at least invest in the lunch. Now, there's a lot of things that you did there that, you know, I just want to break down briefly. There was internal work that you did first, some clarifying work on what some of your goals were that helped you might maybe kind of scout the right mentor relative to where you wanted to go with your life. You didn't just kind of randomly go out, oh, he's successful. I want to approach him. You said, this is what I want to do with my life. This is my values. This is what's important to me. Who out there can kind of help me get in alignment with what I'm trying to do with my life? And then what value can I offer them first in the form of, in, in this case, a, a lunch at Boston Market, which sounds pretty good right now. I'm actually kind of hungry. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's actually one of my favorite places. <laughs> so, so I mean, you did all these things. I mean, did you just come up with this on your own and kind of put these down? Because it did kind of sound like a, a very strategic approach to finding a mentor. Honestly, this is, um, I'm, I'm kind of spewing out or, or rewording it to, you know, because of the interview. But what I did was they, they were all those steps, but they weren't as polished as they are now. Um, as I wrote in my book okay. that I just published, okay. I write about mentorship in there as well. So you're looking back and saying, these are the steps I took, but at the time you maybe just tried different things and they weren't working. Exactly. Got exactly. It. But okay. I knew, I knew two things. I knew that I wanted to set my goals up and I knew that I didn't want to waste this guy's time. Mm. So, and you beginning with that sort of theme of what you're doing with your time and how you're approaching them, that's what you kind of evolved the steps out of. Exactly. Okay. And so now you're you're working with a mentor. You're starting to get this exposure to a, a, a network that is more in alignment with your values and where you want to go with your life. What happened from there? I mean, was it an immediate overnight transformation or was it a gradual step-by-step? I wish I could say it was overnight. Um, it, it took me several years to become an overnight success. Right. I, <laughs> but I hear that a lot on this show. It was very gradual. Uh-huh. <laughs> it, it was very gradual and it was very organic. Mm. I think what what I want to tell your listeners is to make sure that when you're developing that mentor relationship, not to rush it. It, mm. it, it has to develop organically. And um, and he and I actually became very good friends out of that mentor relationship. Uh, you know, I attending meetings with him, I started really seeing how this was run because mm. I'd never been exposed to this. I never really had been exposed to men who were men of their word. Mm. So these were these were truths and oral, you know, guideposts that really helped structure my life because I realized at 23 my life was a shambles. You know, I you know, as I said, I was behind on all my bills. I I, I wasn't a man of my word. I had no integrity. And just being around people that held me accountable huge. It was a new thing. It was challenging, but it stretched me into a better man. Yeah, and, and, and what I see is doing the stretching with a mentor relationship like that is you're able to contrast your life and all the people you know with this influence that you're looking up to that's sort of the model of what you want to be. And that you're able to make that contrast of what is he doing that I'm not doing, what am I doing that he's not doing to kind of help you mold and shape your own sort of self-image that you want to become. Exactly right. And also, yeah, I'm still here. That's absolutely right. And, and, and I think that's such a, a just a, such a simple yet powerful lesson about the vision of what you want for your life. He helped you kind of shape that vision that maybe you didn't have earlier on because at first you just said, I know what I'm doing now I don't want. But he maybe helped you kind of craft a vision of what you do want because unless you're exposed to it, unless you're aware of something greater out there, how can you create that vision unless you're just you know super imaginative? I'm imagining that you didn't at first know exactly what you wanted or what kind of person you wanted to be, just that you wanted to be better than what you were. 
James, that's exactly right. You have to, and I tell a lot of my clients, it starts with just that initial dissatisfaction mm. that you know something's not right. Yeah. We can build from there, but but until you acknowledge and understand, hey, this isn't really working for me. And then I hear people say all the time, you know, experience is the best teacher. That's to me, that's a bunch of crap because experience can be an extreme long and expensive course. Mm -hmm. If I can learn something from James Rick, you know, that may took may have taken you 10 years to learn, you may be able to teach me in two weeks and it can avoid 20, 30, 40,000 dollar mistakes in my life. You know, you can and, learn from either a mistake or a mentor. And, and I'd rather the, learn from that's a That's what the show is about too. You know, it's not that I have all the answers, it's that collectively People that have devoted their life to finding the best practices for how to live a full potential life, they have the answers and together we can create what is the most accurate version of that truth. And and you're part of it. You know, your your unique experiences, the stuff that anybody watching right now doesn't have to go through if even if they're in similar circumstances. Yeah. Boom. They, in one right. show wow. they can create that shift. Something you did early that's different from a lot of people that maybe know something's not working. And I want to understand why you did this. Something you did with, you know, a lot of people might complain. This isn't working. I blame it on my father. Because, you know, like you said, you, you had a struggle with, with that in your early life. You know, and then that's the end of it. It's not working. I blame it on my father. And, and now I can put everything on him. And I can live this, this life that I'm not happy with. But I don't have to take responsibility for it. What caused you... To take responsibility for your life and stop putting the blame on things outside of yourself. Wow, I, I got I've gotten fed up. I, I had gotten fed up with excuses. Mm -hmm. um, one of the things that my mentor said early on in our mentor relationship was, "You can make excuses or you can make history, but you can't do both." Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And and just the thought, nobody had ever told me I can make history. You know, mm -hmm. I, I understand I came from a very different background um it was nothing to see about see stabbings and shootings that not video games real life deaths you know right. so for someone to pull me aside and look me in the face as a man say you can make his something valuable on the inside of you i think that all of our men women whatever long for some type of significance and when someone identifies that there's some there's something significant uh it, it triggers it triggered something internally for me that i realized I, I have to attack these excuses because these excuses have gotten me what i've always gotten so if i want something different I have something different. If I were to kind of break down what you just described and what you did, what I see is he helped you expand your vision first. He planted a seed or maybe activated a seed that was already yes. in there. And you're like, I can make history? Like for the first time in your life, you started thinking bigger. And then you're like, well, how can I do that? And the first thing that occurred it, to you is I have to, I have to let go of these excuses. Because I'm not going to do it if I have these excuses. So it's interesting how that broke down for you and, and, and how many people, if, if they don't have that expanded vision, how are they going to stop making excuses? Because they don't know why they should stop making excuses. Most people don't have a big enough why. And that's what that's what having the right people in your life do. They activate the why for you. The how, how something's going to happen, that, that's, that's almost easy. You know, you're, you're going to figure that out. But it, you need that big why to start going in the right direction, James. And, and then it is an evolution. Like you said, it takes many years to become an overnight success. And the overnight success part is just when you break through, it's kind of like the, maybe the chick inside the egg or the, 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 the it, it just takes so many times before you actually notice anything happening. You know, you hear the bamboo story, the bamboo's growing all this time, but you don't see it until it breaks above ground. So there's a lot of metaphors for that continual effort that nobody sees and that you yourself don't see much progress, but to persist with a worthy enough why and exactly. something that juices you is gonna eventually help you to break through. And you, you have broken through early. Uh, I understand that you're a life coach and, and that um, you know, you, you've written a, a, a book. Why don't you talk to, to us about some of the core lessons that you've learned along the way that people can take away from the show. Aside from what we talked about getting a mentor and, and having a strong enough why, what are some key ideas that you want to leave people with before we conclude the show? Absolutely. Um, James, I think life is all about getting ready. How much of your day was spent in preparation for something? Mm -hmm. I think that there's, there's almost an eight to one ratio of prep time to an active thing. And um, I started teaching a series with some of my clients, um, my coaching clients, about being groomed. Most of us spend the bulk of our lives getting ready for something, almost an eight to one ratio. 
So you're you're behind stage, you're getting dressed, costume is checked, you makeup is checked, your hair is checked, you, um, and, and all for just this one moment where the curtain splits and the lights on you. Most people spend more time dreaming about the light and the stage than they do getting ready. Mm. So I wrote a book called Room for Greatness, and it just is 31 days to an empowered life. And I tell people, if you give me 31 days of your life, mm. I'll help you get groomed for greatness. And it's, it's in fact, it's right here. Uh, it's it's kind of a flip book. You just pop it up, mm. whatever day of the month it's on. Oh, you just cool. set it right there. And it's, for instance, I, I happen to turn to day nine and it says, give yourself permission to be extraordinary today. Mm. And it just goes through something. Usually there's a funny antidote about my life and there is some screw up I made because I think you can learn and laugh from my stupid mistakes, you know, um, but it, it it pulls things like mentorship, like um, developing a better friend zone, uh, because I found out that people generally are like the five people that they hang out with the most. Mm. They'll weigh almost the same. They'll make almost the same. Mm. So if you want better outcomes, you have to seek a better circle. And I'm saying that the people you're with aren't better. But honestly, you have to evaluate where you want to go. And there, there are 31 different truths in there that will break down and give you something to do each day because I'm real big on practicality and simple steps. Can you give us a few of the biggest ones? I mean, I, I encourage everybody. Where, first of all, where could they pick up the book if they want to get the book? It's kind of it's a cool idea. I, I could see that sitting on my desk for 31 days. So, I, I, you know, I may take that 31 day groom for greatness challenge because I think everybody can always go that much further. Even an inch gives you more of an edge on what you want to do in your life. Where can we wow, pick up yeah. the book? Sure, on my website, which is www.earlyjackson, and that's E-A-R-L-Y, jacksoncoaching.com, or they can just go to amazon.com and put me in the search, Early Jackson, and I'll come right up. Okay, and and you know, it almost seems ironic that your name is Early and you're talking about preparation. Is that, did, do you see... <laughs> The irony in that? Did you change your name or did your did, did the universe know what you'd be doing and talking about? The universe knew. And ironically, James, I was born three months early. My mom had an emergency C-section because um, her kidneys failed. Mm. And the doctors had given me less than a 20% chance to live. I spent about eight months of my life in the hospital. I weighed about a pound, four ounces. I looked like a big bar of soap, they said. Oh, wow. But um, I was going to get the name any. I was going to get the name. It goes up six generations in my family. My dad's name's early. His dad, my son's name early. You know, so it goes. It, it's just ironic how yeah. everything fell. Into. So I'm kind of a guy that wasn't even supposed to be here. <laughs> so so early Jackson, he was early in life. He's, he, he, his message is about preparation. It's something you said. Uh, I don't know where I saw it, um, but I and you know what? I got all these windows up now. I can't even find it. But you set your motto in a nutshell is that in order to reach full status and, and basically to reach full potential in your life, you've got to be prepared and you've got to discipline. I mean, you've got to be able to say no to certain things that, and, and I'm, you know, obviously it was shorter than this, but I mean, ultimately you're saying that preparation is the key and preparing yourself, preparing your character, you may only be on stage, whatever that stage of life may be for a short time. And all along the way, you're preparing for that show. And I think that's such a, a, a an enlightened perspective on when it does happen, you better make damn sure you're ready. You gotta be ready. You know, um, and I'll say this, James, very quickly. Uh, we when you when you separate good from great, because good is 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 nice, but great is better. Uh, the, the the gap between good and great is usually in preparation. Mm. What what makes an average football player different than Ocho Cinco from um, Cincinnati is the fact that he spends his off season preparing for the season, whereas someone else may t actually take a break. Mm -hmm. He's always on. And when you look at great musicians, Michael Jackson, uh, you know, uh, uh, Cher, you know, those icons, you know, uh, that have lasted the test of time, Celine Dion, these are people who are always extra prepared mm -hmm. and they, they do a dynamic show. I love it. Early, where can people learn more about what you do and how to work with you? Wow. Um, Facebook is always a great place. I have a fan page, Fans of Life Coach Early Jackson. Um, and I say that because everybody's on Facebook. Or they can just go right to my website, www.earlyjacksoncoaching.com. And or they can just kind of stick me in there and Google me. You know, usually when they put in Early Jackson in the Google search, they'll come up. The first few are Early Jackson 5 videos. So you scroll down past those, get past Michael and Tito. I'm right there. <laughs> okay. Oh, I see what you're saying. Early, like early Michael Jackson. Gotcha. 
<laughs> exactly. They'll come up on Google. So, okay. uh, yeah. But I'm there. I'm right, there well, somewhere. <laughs> and, and can you can you sing like Michael? Can you dance? Can you do you do? <laughs> now, now I'll tell you. I do a mean karaoke. All right. Mean. But we won't say I'm, I'm, my, I'm, we won't go to the Michael level. It's you're not going to do the moonwalk with your clients. Er, early Jackson. No. Early, thank you so much for being on the Full Potential Show today. I think you have such an important message. Thank you for sharing it here with us today. And uh, I look forward to connecting with you more and, and uh, picking up your book. Absolutely, James. Thanks a lot for the interview. Talk to you soon. All right. Talk to you soon. Take care, Early. Bye-bye. Well, that concludes this week's episode of the Full Potential Show, your number one non-boring source for personal development. I'm James Rick, and if you want to get more positive programming for your brain absolutely free on a weekly basis, just visit fullpotential.com.